29 or 30 jurisdictions in some way or another have legalized marijuana for one purpose or another. And yet, because of the inaction of the DEA, marijuana is still a Schedule I drug, along with heroin and ecstasy and acid. Uh, do you believe that marijuana should be classified as the same as LSD, ecstasy, and acid, uh, and, and heroin, excuse me? So the, the reason why it remains in Schedule I is because of the science. So the, the they're, science. They're, the science. So FDA does its eight-factor analysis, DEA does its, its review, and therefore it remains in Schedule One. Before we talk about the science, and I'm happy to hear that you believe in science, that's refreshing, uh, what do you think? Do you think marijuana should be Schedule One? If you could have, based on your knowledge of the harm that marijuana causes as distinguished from the harm that heroin causes, the public and, and, and society. So I'm going to give you my honest opinion, and this actually doesn't shape how we do enforcement at DEA, because our priorities are the, the biggest priorities that we face, which is the opioid issue, methamphetamine, cocaine that's now on a resurgence. So marijuana obviously is lower on the scale of what we do, and, and where we look to deal with that is in states where we see the importation of crime into those states from other states that are growing to, to distribute it back out, or exportation from those states, groups that are violent, other actions that are going on. So that's where DEA prioritizes. I, I fear, and I'm just giving you my honest opinion, that we're going down a bad path with marijuana. And, and I'll tell you the reason why I say that. This is not from necessarily the law enforcement person, because if I give you the law enforcement version, it's discounted as law enforcement. All of the, the, the driving conversations of this generally go around revenue, and that's unfortunate to me. And I think 10 years ago, we'd sit here and we could have this debate as to what's better, what's worse. You know, is heroin worse than marijuana? And I'm, I'm not going to debate that because I think to me that's, they're two completely different things, right? I, I think the concern we see is we now have a body of evidence in states that have run what I call the social experiment for 10 years, right? So Colorado is a great one. And if we have an honest conversation about what we're starting to see in Colorado, my fear is that in 10 years, and I won't be sitting here, but you will all have someone here from DEA or some other agency saying, why was no one saying something? I see that path coming. And frankly, if you look back 20 years ago on the pharmaceutical world, people were screaming into the wind. It was a small percentage of people really concerned about what they were seeing. You have extremely high THC. And putting all the other things aside, right, you know, property values in Colorado, the fact that revenue is not essentially making up for what the costs are, issues with children, all these other things. If you take that all and just put it aside, I'd simply ask the question to the adults in this country, which is at what point did we determine that revenue was more important than our kids? Mr. Patterson, I appreciate your statements, and I, and I, and I can see where you're and have a different perspective than some previous DEA administrators, at least your honesty, because I think the previous, the last one under Obama, I think thought like you did, but didn't talk like you did. Uh, I think most adults don't see it as dollars and cents. Most adults see it as a freedom issue, and taking somebody's liberty from them for smoking marijuana, and the fact that three and a half times more African Americans than Caucasians are arrested and lose their, their liberty and possibly their hope in the future for educational uh, uh, Pell Grants or educational scholarships or, or public housing if they need it is taken away from them because of smoking a, uh, a plant that is legal and that doesn't cause people to die. I don't, I look at it and most adults look at it as a freedom issue and as a, uh, the, and you put it as beneath three other drugs, I think, and I'm sure you put it, meth above it as well. Probably farther down than that. Yeah, and I mean, meth kills people. Crack can kill people. You get addicted. Opioids, you get addicted, you'll kill, and heroin, you die, kill people. It's, marijuana's not the same thing. So there's a limited amount of resources the DEA has, police officers have, judicial, law enforcement, everybody. And there's an a, a opportunity cost. And when you spend time dealing with marijuana, all you're doing is, is, is taking time away from drugs that kill people. Gentlemen's time crime. has expired. So I thank you for your honesty and appreciate the time. And I, you can answer some more if you'd like. If I could just add one comment on the end. So DEA doesn't expend its resources on users of marijuana. And quite frankly, I'm not sure what state is. Um, so I, I think that you see even states where it remains illegal. I, 
I don't see a huge enforcement presence. That's a good conversation to have, but I hear this statistic all the time that there's mass incarceration of users, not just of marijuana, but of drugs in general, and I don't see it. So it'd be a conversation I'd like to have further, to be honest with you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, the